Tales are told in them too. <laughs> Amen. It's time to get service. Let's stand and go before the Lord and ask Him to move in our midst this evening. Father, have your way tonight. We thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for this service. And I thank you for moving by your spirit. We worship you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. God, we honor your name tonight. And we thank you for this service this evening in Jesus' name. Sing that chorus. I'm so glad Jesus set me free. Are you glad tonight? Amen. Amen. I'm so glad.
church that said, well, the stillers are still playing. And I don't know if people are going to show up or not, but, I'm, but we're going to show up. <laughs> and then this morning I said, if Jess Templeton show up, we're going to be here. Right. You remember Templeton from Charles Well? <laughs> Templeton ate too much at, at the carnival, at the fair, or whatever. And, and uh, on that on that story, story, but and I, and, and, and you know I was saying that in, in gesture, but really, uh, being able to come to church is an honor. Yes, yes sir. It really is. Amen. And we understand that sometimes people have to work, they have schedules, they have different things. We we're not insensitive to those things. But I've always been the kind of person, if it's something I can do for God, I'm going to do it. Amen. If it's yes, something sir. that I can do for God, Amen. I'm going to do it, even if it involves sacrifice. Yes, Amen. sir. Amen. Because Jesus sacrificed for me. Mm -hmm. Now, sometimes you have to do what you have to do. Um, you know, people have things going on. We understand that. But if at all possible. You know, when we can be in the house of the Lord, we need to be in the house of the Lord. Yes, Amen. sir. So anyway, like I said, we're not here to bash and throw stones because we all live in a glass house, don't we? <laughs> so we don't want anybody throwing stones and breaking our glass out. Yes, but remember, tomorrow night, leadership class, last one. Yes, sir. And last one, so it should be yeah. fun. And uh, we'll just close it out. I think everyone has a fairly good idea of of what God is looking for. And, and, uh, and there's so many things you can teach on leadership. There's so many aspects that you can cover. We would be having class for the next, from here till we all pass away, <laughs> talking about leadership, <laughs> right? And so leadership is just basically uh, taking responsibility for the uh, position that you may hold and being accountable to God and for whoever put you there. Amen? Amen. And, and doing it with honor and dignity and conscientiousness. And uh, understanding that people are looking up to you. Yes, sir. And uh, so I appreciate that and, and, and the fact that not only do I love God, I, and because I love other people, I make sure I do what I'm supposed to do. Because mm -hmm. you never know who's watching. Sometimes people are watching you and you have no idea they're watching. And uh, like I shared with you um, some time ago, and I don't even get deep in the weeds with this, but when uh, my daughter, who's 28 now, she just turned 28 in October, when she was in second grade, mm -hmm. a new girl came to the school, and her parents had just freshly, were freshly divorced, and she was in a bad way, but we had no idea. Just think she was only a second grader. Mm -hmm. And she messaged my daughter about a year or so ago and said, Sharice, I don't know if you remember me, but we were in second grade together. And I remember coming to the school. And when I came to the school, I felt like the bad, I felt like we were the poor kids. We were the, she felt displaced because of what had happened with her parents. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and she said, your parents were so nice to me. Your parents treated me so nice. And you know, you're not even, you just wow. do, it's like when you when it comes to kids, oh, yes. I, I have no idea how an adult can mistreat a child. Yes, I, I just, yes. I, I don't understand that. Mm -hmm. How could you do anything on any level to hurt a child? And, and we don't need to stand up here and go through all the details. But what I'm saying is I have no idea how a person could do anything mm -hmm. untoward, out of bounds, whatever you want to call it, to harm a child. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so she messaged her, and, uh, and Sharice remembered her, and uh, evidently the young girl had grown up, and she had been having drug problems, really good. And she said, for some reason, that came to her mind. Just think she was in second grade then, and here it is, 2021. Right. And she's thinking about how somebody treated her nice, wow. even though we didn't know her. And she said, your dad with that smile. <laughs> A second grade. Yes, sir. Yes. And do you not know that girl committed suicide? Oh, mm. 
Shortly after that, shortly after that, last year, she committed suicide. And it's just like, God, I wish we could have done more. And, uh, but what I'm trying to tell you is that leadership, leadership is influencing people. Being where God wants you to be, taking what you do seriously, yes, sir. understanding that there are people watching you who you have no idea yes. that's watching you, and um, and 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 I'm gonna share this, and I'm not gonna keep dwelling on it. But Ron, we all went out to fellowship today. Ron finally told me. He said, "I remember this was before he even came to the church." This was before we ever had known him. We knocked on his door up in uh, Pleasant Ridge. He said, I delivered to Brother James. He said, he had delivered to you. And he said, back then, it was just something about your spirit. About He said, you just had, it was just something about you. And uh, so, I'm, so even then, sir, you was influencing this man. And you didn't even know him from yes. now. Amen. Amen. That's why it's so important. Yes. yes. We don't just come here because it's cool. Right. I mean, it is cool. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it is cool. But we, we don't just come to church because it's cool. We come here because we love God. Yes. We love people. Amen. And we want to impact other people's lives. Yes. In a good way. Amen. In a good way. Amen. And I'm so thankful. Even though things didn't end the way we would have liked for it to end, at least we was able to influence the young girl yes. in some way. Amen? Amen. And uh, without even knowing it, without even knowing it. And, and that's why it's so important. So tomorrow night we'll be uh, doing leadership class. And so we'll finish up at 7 o'clock. It's, it's just a half an hour. So, and we'll have a good time, we'll fellowship and laugh and enjoy each other, amen, after we, we're finished. And then, of course, Tuesday night, Tuesday night is going to be a big, big night. Amen. We're going to have a night of thanks, a special church service, instead of doing it Wednesday night, because that's our normal church service. We're going to have a special Thanksgiving night service to give thanks to God. And, and that way, Wednesday, people can stay home, prepare for Thanksgiving, uh, receive guests, and prepare. And, you know, people are running around to the store and things like that. That way we can just have church Tuesday night, and we don't have to be concerned with all of that. Mm -hmm. And if people need to travel, they can travel. They can do this, do that, and the other. And then we'll see you back here Saturday night. For Bible studies. All right? Amen. You said, but Friday is Black Friday and I got to do all my shopping on Saturday. Man, you know, it'd probably be good to save some money sometime. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I like saving money too. You know, <laughs> even though I don't mind spending some money here and there, I kind of like saving too. Mm -hmm. And um, if you said, well, it was on sale, I get that. But I can, you know, I, I kind of like keeping my money if I can. <laughs> Amen. That way, if I really need something, I can go get it. Yes, <laughs> Amen. If I need to get my car fixed, I can go get it fixed. Yes, if I need sir. to pay a bill, I can pay it. If I need to uh, do some or do some kind of investment or or whatever the case may be. Amen. I, I you know, you know, sometimes it, sometimes we, we need to stop letting these people suck us in. You know, all these glitzy commercials and billboards and TV commercials and, oh, my God, oh, my God, I got to have that. You see this grown man running around the living room. I got to have that Tonka truck. You know, I'm just kidding. But anyway, although I do like, as a man, I do like cars and I like racetracks, but my favorite was something that I always wanted as a kid, but I never got it, a train. I wanted one of those Lionel trains that went around the room. I never, but I always, that's the one thing 
that I always wanted, but I'm not going to die if I don't ever get it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, I'm going to be okay. No, we're going to be okay. And uh, so but what I'm saying is, we'll see you here Saturday night Bible study. Amen. With wings and bells on your feet. All right? And then Sunday morning and Sunday night. All right? So we're, we're excited, everyone. So once again, leadership class. And then Tuesday special service at 730. Amen. Let's tell others, I, I think uh, there's already people planning on coming, yeah. and we're excited about that. We're going to have a wonderful service. We had a wonderful service this morning. Amen. And you know what? Tonight, yes. you can still put a praise on it. Yes. Amen. Amen. Uh, you yes, missed it, sir. Dave. Amen. 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 We, 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 whatever it was we was experiencing, we just put a praise on it. Yes, right. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I'm going to praise God no matter what I'm going through. Yes, sir. I'm going to praise God no matter how I feel. I'm going to praise God no matter what I have or don't have. I'm going to give God, the Bible said, in, in everything, give thanks. Yes. And then it also says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall what? Continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be what? Glad. Amen. So no matter what you're experiencing, even tonight, put a praise on. All right? <laughs> Put a praise on it. Like, man, I, I'm, I refuse to get down. Yeah. I refuse to, to get in the muddy grubs. Mm -hmm. I refuse because you know what? It's hard. If once you let yourself go, it's hard to get up. It's hard to get up. Now, you can get up and you should get up, but if you don't let yourself get down there, amen, then it's better. Yeah. Amen. The muddy grubs and all of that, and you know, being a lump of a log and all, whatever you want to call it. I don't want that. Yeah. Amen. I want my spirits and my attitudes to stay up and yes. down. Amen. And help me work through whatever I'm going through. Help me uh, pro uh, progress and get better. But do it with a good spirit and a beautiful attitude. Yes. Amen. Amen. Because boy, getting down, it, it, you, it happens. But, but it takes a lot of energy and it takes a lot of effort to get up out of battle. To get up out of mother growth. It really does. Amen. So we have to work hard not to go there. Amen. Like God, with your help, I'm not going there. Yes, sir. And if I do go there, I need to get out of here quick as possible. Mm -hmm. Quick as possible. Because I'm not going to lay hand at the devil walk all over me. Amen. And I'm not going to let people walk around feeling sorry for me. Yes, sir. Amen. I have God. Amen. I said we have God tonight. Yes. Amen. And when you have God, you have everything you need. I'm serious about that. I'm not just saying that. Yes, sir. So, but anyway, um, oh, it's warm in here. I like to preach a message that God uh, dealt with my heart about earlier in the week. And I'm so glad that being a full time minister, you're able to really give yourself to God more. And while that's happening, I'm able to write notes so that, because uh, it helped me to be able to go back and recapture what God was working with me on and dealing with me on. I have another message that I'm going to preach in the future about the anointing, Amen. about the anointing of God. What is it? What does it mean? And what's the impact of the anointing? What does it really mean when a person is anointed? Amen. And so we, we'll talk about that, but not tonight. Amen. But we're going to talk about something else that God um, showed me while I was reading, doing some reading and meditating and uh, some, some, some thinking. You know, thinking is a good exercise. <laughs> we should try it every once in a while. It is a good exercise. Yes, it really is. And uh, Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. And once again, we appreciate you, and we're, we we welcome all of those that who, who who join us, who are joining joining us online, or who will join us later on to watch the service. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for the support. Yes, uh, 
Our giving link is on the screen there for those that are online. If you'd like to support our ministry, if you'd like to support the church, uh, the, link, the, the link is there. And uh, we're thankful for the people that support the church. We'll receive the tithes and offerings a little later. But we're thankful. Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 5. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, what does the word justify mean? Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. What does the word justify mean? It means being declared not guilty. In other words, whatever you did before you came to God, once you repent, once you ask Jesus to come into your heart, he wipes everything clean. And not only does he wipe everything you ever did clear and clean, it's as if you never did them. And then a second thing that justification does, he also removes the guilt that came along with it. Because a lot of times when we do wrong, we feel so bad about it, it keeps us from growing. It keeps us from accepting God's forgiveness. It keeps us from actually repenting of our sins because we're thinking there's no way. This I, I feel so bad. This, what I did was really wrong, preacher. What, what was real bad, and, and I really hurt this person, and I really violated this one, and I just can't get over the fact that I did this and I did that. That's the beauty of salvation. That's the beauty of forgiveness. It's not, not only does God just wipe it away, but he removes the word justified means declare not guilty. Uh, so he removes the guilt as well as the sin, which I'm so thankful. And God, whatever you did with everything that I did before I got saved, keep it away from me. I don't, I don't have anything to brag about. I don't have anything boast about because I'm ashamed and I'm embarrassed that I allow myself to sin against God. Yes. I'm ashamed that I violated the Son of Almighty God. But God, with your help, with your mercy and your grace, I'm going to take salvation, I'm going to take forgiveness, I'm going to take the opportunity of repenting, and I'm going to do the best I can and I'm going to show you that I love you. I'm going to show you that I want to work for you. I'm going to show you, God, that I care that you forgave me by being faithful, by being committed, and by being dedicated. Amen. We got to show God. He did not God not only love us, but he proved his love. You know, it's easy to tell somebody you love them. And, oh, I love you. Love is what it does. Yes, sir. God. Amen. Are you with me? Amen. Love is exactly what it does. Yes, love sir. is an action word. Yes, sir. Love is an action word. Now, I know God loves me. Mm -hmm. And you know that God loves you. And you know, how can you say that? For God so yes. loved the world. Yes. Amen. That he was gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. I also know that the Bible said God is love. Amen. 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 God. So now that I know that God loves me now prove to God that you love him. Show you that I love you. I'm going to be dedicated. 
faithful in telling others about Jesus. Amen. We know he loves us, but do we love him? Amen. Now, I'm not questioning your love for God. I'm just telling you that the way that we know God loves us is that he gave his only begotten son. Now, how do we prove our love? By giving to God. Right? By giving back to God. Okay, move right along. First, so now that you know you've been justified, right? By whom also we have access by faith. Access, when you think of the word access, the first thing that should come to your mind is a door. Entrance and an exit. Right? Access means that you can gain entrance. That means you can get in. That means that you have a way in God. I have a way into your presence. God, because you've forgiven me of my sins, I have access to God. I can go in, the Bible says, come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain what? Mercy and help. And what? In the time of need, I thank God tonight yes. for yes. access. Yes. I'm not, I'm not on the outside looking in. I have access. I can get into God. Yes. I can get into where He is. Yes. Jesus is my access. I said, Jesus is my access. Amen. All right. By whom also we have access. By faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. And rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. While I was looking over this, <laughs> while I was looking over this, God showed me two things. God showed me two things. He said, You have hope, you have hope personally. In other words, you have expectation from me that I'm going to help you personally, and then you have expectation of me bringing you to heaven. Amen. That's called hope. <laughs> uh, uh, I know that as long as I stay in God, I'm going to get better. I know that as long as I keep serving God, I'm going to keep growing. My expectation, hope is another word for expectation. I mean, I'm expecting God to help me. I'm expecting God to move. I'm expecting God to come on the scene. Yes, sir. I'm expecting God to answer my prayer. And so, no, so hope is me personally. And then hope is also knowing that as I walk with God, as I talk with God, as I do what I'm supposed to do, I have the expectation of going to heaven. And you know what? Oh, woe be unto you if you miss heaven. I said, woe be unto you if you miss heaven tonight. Oh, God, whatever it takes, if I have to ride the altar like a bucket bronco, I, I refuse to die on the hill. I'm going to do what God wants me to do if it costs every ounce of strength. Also, 
knowing that tribulation does what? Working patience. Not one place in the Bible tells you to pray for patience. I don't know why people would pray for patience. Uh, patience is something that is cooked in the battle. Uh, patience is something that's in the mix. Patience is something you develop as you go through what God takes you through. Uh, you're going to learn how to wait on God uh, when, you're, when you're going through something. Yes, Amen. Yes. And, and if you pray for that thing, man, let me tell you, I remember we was in Bible college, right? We was in Bible school. I was real young back then. And man, I was on this. You know how when you're young, and, oh God, God, give me patience. Oh God, give me patience. <laughs> So I'm riding with these brothers to work in the morning. The tire blew out. The car broke down. This happened. This is what my brother said. Have you been praying for Casey? Oh, I kid you not. I kid you not. Now, one place in the Bible tells you to pray for, because patience is natural. It's organically worked in when you suffer. It's organically worked in uh, when God is teaching you uh, how to trust him, uh, how to depend upon him, uh, yes. how to learn, uh, how to have faith in God. Yes. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Knowing that tribulation working, then the Bible said tribulation does what? Working. He, didn't, he said the tribulation will bring the patience. <laughs> I'm going to give you this. So, hey, won't you laugh? <laughs> but, but, Jane, what, what am I supposed to do? I got to preach the Bible, right? <laughs> I got to preach the Bible. Amen. But I'm just trying to explain to you. I, I try to show people the right way to serve God. And for so long, people go to church for years and years and years, and they think they got to play this super spiritual walk around, charismatic, and all this stuff. Just, just serve God and live out of life. Amen. I don't have anything to prove to anybody. I don't have to try to convince you and myself that I'm saved. Amen. You know how you got these people that are overcompensating in this way and overcompensating that. And they're always trying to convince people that they got a handle on God and that they're, they're, they're a gospel giant and all of this stuff. And you know what? I, I just walk with God. Yeah. Uh, if you walk with God, right. you'll reach your destination. Yeah. If you just walk with God, uh, he'll teach you the lessons of life. Uh, yeah. If you just walk with God, uh, he'll open up the Bible to you. Yeah. Uh, if you just walk with God uh, and come to church uh, and serve God uh, and even witnessing to other people, yeah. uh, God bless you. I can't tell you how many times just witnessing to other people that God bless me personally. Yes, sir. Amen. <laughs> Just not talking to people about the Lord. Right. Amen. 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 Work with patience. And patience, and once you start practicing patience, patience working, start helping you with experience, mm -hmm. the Bible said. And then experience what? Hope. And hope make it not a shame. Mm -hmm. Because the love is shed abroad in our hearts by the what? Holy Ghost. Isn't that what the Bible said? By. So all of these things that I just read to you is facilitated by the Holy Ghost Amen. that you need to have in your life. Yes. Now, how does this work? When you understand what Paul is writing to the people of Rome here in the fifth verse. He said, and the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by what? The Holy Ghost. By the Holy Ghost. All right? The love of God. Now, when we receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues, it is a baptism of love. Okay? It's a baptism of love. And yeah, most people focus on the tongues. I mean, oh, no, no. But, but you know what? It's a whole lot more than that. That's right. It's a whole yes. lot more than that. Yes. When God baptizes a man or a woman with the Holy Ghost, it's a baptism of love. Yes. And then he gives you that along with that baptism of love comes power. Yes. Uh, and yes. that's how with the power of the Holy Ghost Now, what does shed abroad mean? 
What does that mean? The love of God is shared abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. <laughs> this, this is uh, amazing. The love of God is shared abroad in our heart by the Holy Ghost. The words shared abroad means, number one, to gush forth. It means to gush forth. All right? Man, when something is gushing out, that means it is so much coming out at one time, you don't know what to do with it. Mm -hmm. uh, you ever had something gush out at you? Yes. It's bad when you get hurt and your blood is gushing out. That, that, you don't want that. Mm -hmm. right? That's not gushing out you want. But what I'm, what I'm trying to point out to you, the Bible said that the love of God, the love, so this is how I don't understand how a person that's saved can, mis can mistreat another person. Uh, a person that loves God, how can you mistreat another person, period? Because the Bible said, and, and especially if you tell me you have the Holy Ghost, because the Bible says the love of God is shared abroad in our hearts by, facilitated by the what? Holy Ghost. And what does the word shared abroad mean? To gush forth. Not only does it mean to gush forth, it means to pour out. It means to pour out. It also means to bestow upon and then get a load of this one. It means to run uh, it means to run greedily. I don't know if you've ever been to St. Louis, Missouri. And St. Louis, Missouri, right through the city, runs the Mississippi River. And, uh, and anybody that's ever seen one of these rivers, even the Ohio River, at certain points, is so powerful and so strong. But if you've ever seen, like, the Mississippi River and any of these other, like, really, really, really big rivers, they are powerful. Uh, that's what the Holy Ghost, the, it means to gush forth. It means to run greedily. That means that the love of God is running greedily in the life of a man or a woman when you have the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. And not only that, then it causes you to do verse 2, 3, and 4. Uh, it causes, it facilitates you having the ability and to do these other things. Father, bless the message tonight. God, God help these precious people. Help those that are watching and listening online. I pray, God, that your word will come alive with power and that men and women will receive what they have need of. Maybe somebody's been struggling. Maybe somebody's have been trying to understand, God, what else can I do to get better? What else can I do to grow? What else can I do to take my relationship with God to another level? What can I do? Uh, I'm telling you tonight, uh, you need the Holy Ghost. Uh, I said you need the Holy Ghost tonight. Uh, and when you get the power of God, uh, the love of God uh, will gush out. Uh, the love of God uh, will pour out. about. Uh, what is that, Pastor? You can glory in tribulation. You can, you can be happy when you're dealing with what? What does the word tribulation mean? Pressure. Pressure. Mm -hmm. Right? <laughs> you okay, Miss Angie? Do you, is she okay? Water. Does she need some water? She needs water. <laughs> she's, going, she's going to get some water. <laughs> She's getting it. She's getting it. She's giving you some water. That's okay. That's all right. It's okay. It's all right. Yes. Yeah, she's getting it. Amen. Everything's going to be okay. You're in the best place in the world. Amen. And um, you're going to be fine. Amen. And I'm glad we got water in you. Amen. She's coming.
Jesus for healing tonight. Thank you, Jesus, for healing tonight. My Bible tells me that by his stripes we're healed. Amen. And I'm glad that not only did Jesus die by our sins, he died by our sicknesses. Amen. And our diseases. All right? Amen. So, all right then. Yes, indeed. And God be there. Right now, let's just lift our hands up and thank God for healing tonight. Father, we thank you for healing tonight. We thank you for the power of the Holy Ghost. Lord, we just thank you for this church. We thank you for your spirit. We thank you for the word of God. We thank you, God, that we can look to you. We can trust you. And those of you that are watching online, say a prayer for this angel. Say a prayer for this angel right now. God, we just thank you even now. God, that you continue to help our sister. That you continue to move in our sister's life. Hallelujah. That the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts. We love her with the love of God tonight. We care for her with the love of God tonight. We're concerned with the love of God tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Things facilitated. Things facilitated by the Holy Ghost. Yes, Jesus. The love of God is shed abroad. Gush for by the Holy Ghost. And when you get that, you get glory when things don't go your way. Yes. You can praise God when, when things are not in your favor, so yes, to speak. Sir. Because Amen. you know. God has a great track record. I said God has a great track record tonight. Yes. Even though things are not the way I want it to be, uh, I, I glory in the fact that God is faithful. I, I glory in the fact that God will hear my prayer. I, I glory in the fact that, that even though I'm under pressure, uh, you know what? Uh, when you're under pressure, uh, pressure may die. I said, pressure make diamonds. Uh, and I'm glad uh, that even though I'm under pressure, uh, that God is molding me. Uh, yes. That God is shaping me. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You don't have to fall apart. Yes, sir. You see, because pressure makes diamonds, but it's, it also busts pipes. <laughs> it does. Yes, sir. But in God, Amen. you can be a diamond. Yes. Uh, Thank we welcome pressure Hallelujah. because God helps us when we're in the pressure cooker. Don't you know a pressure cooker tenderizes the meat, don't it? Uh, when you cook with a pressure cooker, it makes the meat tender. And I'm glad uh, that Holy Ghost pressure uh, will tenderize the heart. Uh, yes. Holy Ghost pressure uh, will tenderize the spirit. Uh, yes. Holy Ghost pressure uh, will help us uh, to be the best person. What else is facilitated by the Holy Ghost when we're under pressure? Besides tribulation, didn't Jesus say it in um, John chapter 16 and verse 33? These things have I spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation. Yes. But be of what? Cheer. There it is. Yes. <laughs> well, the pastor, I'm having a hard time. I feel sad. Pastor, I'm having a hard time. I don't know how things are going to work out. He said, be a good cheer. Yes. For I have overcome. Uh -huh. Whatever you're going through is not better than God. Yes. It's not greater than God. Yes. It's not stronger than God. I'm going to tell you right there, there's no amount of money that you will ever need that God can't provide. There's not anything that you will ever need that God can't provide. My God will supply all of your needs. If you need a place to stay, God will supply. Yeah. If you need uh, uh, forgiveness, uh, God will supply forgiveness. Uh, if you need uh, to be a blessing, uh, God can help you to be a blessing. Amen. There's nothing that you need that God can't.
head to plow. I'm under pressure tonight. He said glory and tribulation. And then in that chapter, in that verse, he said, be of good cheer, but I have overcome. Huh? Yes. Whatever pressure you're under, you can overcome yes, tonight. Sir. Knowing that God's got your back. Yes, sir. God's got your back, Miss Angie. Yes. God's got yes. your back. Yes. Amen. God's got all of our back tonight. Amen. And I'm just so thankful uh, oh, yeah. as we get ready to go yeah. into this Christmas season, right? And I understand all these yeah. traditions and all this stuff with the Christmas trees and all this stuff. It's not really necessarily what it's about. Amen. Uh, but you know, Christmas was the promise. Uh, Easter was the proof. Uh, yeah. uh, he promised us a Savior. Uh, uh, he promised us a Savior. Uh, and then Easter, uh, he proved it. Uh, Uh, a, a person that scored a goal don't get all the credit. 
If a person assisted, they get some credit too. Is that not right? Yes, sir. Uh, uh, Brother James, don't we have the one to another? Amen. Uh, I can sit up here and, and take the credit for that concrete getting done out there. That's right. uh, I can't stand up here and get the credit for that grass getting cut. I can't stand up here and say, uh, I did this and I didn't do nothing. The people of God did it. Amen. 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 The people Amen. of God did it because they love God. Yes. Hallelujah. And really, we all worked on it together. Yes, I said we all worked on it together. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And I thank God. Amen. Amen. I don't want no credit. That's right. Amen. All I care is that Jesus is Lord. Amen. I said Jesus is Lord. Yes. To the glory of God. Let me finish up here. And when we begin to practice patience properly, the Bible says in James 1 and 4, but let patience have her what? Perfect work. That ye may be what? Perfect and entire. When you learn how to wait on God with the right attitude, it will cause you to become complete. That's what the word perfect means there. Not means that you won't never make a mistake, that you won't never get tripped up. What the word perfect there means is that you will grow into a whole and complete man or woman of God. Amen. And woe be unto the devil if, if you grow up. Huh? Woe be unto the devil huh? if, you, if you mature like you're supposed to. Yes. It's like you ever seen, uh, my wife and I saw a baby snake a while back. We pulled up there, I'm going to go visit somebody at my ranger farm. And that little baby, I mean, it was just a little bitty thing. And usually baby snakes, when you get out of the car, if it's crawling on the sidewalk, it'll just crawl off. That thing stopped and raised up yes. a baby. And you said, well, why are you saying that? You know, babies grow up. If that thing was already like that as a little bitty snake, imagine what it would have been like mm. if it was wrong. Yes, if he had already had that attitude, Ooh. I'm about you. <laughs> and you know what? I didn't kill it. For some reason, I didn't kill it. Usually, I don't kill it. I just let it go. I did. I let it go. Mm. For some reason. And, um, you know, I, I just, I, I don't know. I'm getting, I'm getting. You know how you're getting up in age, you start. <laughs> I ain't even kidding. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I start looking at the way I start having a little more compassion for something. <laughs> but usually, a snake, I, 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 I would, I would, oh, yeah. usually a snake, I would deal with that. But, but for some reason, I didn't kill that baby snake. Normally, I would have. Because it's something about snakes that would just. And, and, and then the fact that it raised up. Yeah. But for some reason, I didn't kill it. But what I'm saying is, let patience have her perfect work. Boy, it, you know, the devil really pushes us around when we get started, when we're young and God, when we don't have as much experience. But man, if you grow up, mm -hmm. if you learn how to depend upon God, yes, how to trust in God, Man, the, the work you can do for God. All right? Yes, and then when you begin to practice patience, patience brings experience. And thank God for the things we go through, the lessons that we learn, yes. the things that God shows us. I told you guys some time ago about couple that uh, told us, my wife and I, some, some harsh things in the ministry. But we hung in there with them. We, we worked with it. And we became good friends. And things worked out. Because experience. You know, you know every situation doesn't mean you, you get into it with everybody. Every situation doesn't mean that you pack up and leave. Every situation doesn't mean you stand out and argue. Every situation doesn't. Some things you just got to let God take care of it. 
You got to let God work with it. You got to let God handle it. And you got to continue to work with people and try to help them and make them understand that it's not, in, in that particular case, uh, it wasn't us, it was them. But God was able to work it out. I said, God was able to work it out. And then experience hope. Amen. Yes. Experience hope. And tonight, what are we talking about? Things that facilitate, that are facilitated by the Holy Spirit. Yes. That are facilitated. And we need the Holy Ghost tonight. Amen. I said we need the Holy Ghost tonight. We need God to help us. We need God to move in our life. We need the Holy Ghost with the love of God gushing out. With the Holy Ghost being poured out. With the Holy Ghost uh, being uh, uh, with, with running greedily in our life. Uh, and you know what I want you to do? I want you to come and stand around the altar tonight. And let's just pray and let's talk to God. Let's just pray and talk to God.